In May this year, uh, Irish voters decided to repeal the Eighth Amendment to the Constitution, which prevented abortion within the boundaries of the state. Uh, that amendment had been introduced by fundamentalist Christians in 1983 and had really hung like a shadow over everybody of childbearing age uh, in Ireland for all of my adult life, certainly. Went together with bans on divorce, uh, the criminalisation of homosexuality, and a whole string of carceral institutions imprisoning, for example, unmarried mothers, which have gradually been abolished over the years. So it took an absolutely huge effort to overturn this thing. Ireland had been historically extraordinarily Catholic, uh, and really only a very small number of quite brave people at the start were willing to stand up and speak out against this. Even in the 21st century and into the 2010s, the mainstream women's movement took the view, well, we can't really do anything about this, let's have some conferences which maybe talk about some of the awkward legal or medical aspects, but let's not actually try to abolish this thing. Um, so it was brave, radical, younger people uh, who decided, no, actually, we're going to abolish this, we're going to make free, safe, legal abortion available in Ireland for the first time. And I think the time, the moment when we knew that that was actually going to happen was uh, the March for Choice two years back, where we knew in advance there was a plan to blockade the main bridge in the city of Connell Bridge, but we assumed that this would be a short-lived publicity stunt. And suddenly there were 9,000 of us on the bridge. And this was a total surprise even to organisers. Nobody had a plan, there were no speakers. It was chilly, it was March, I think, so we wound up marching round and round this bridge for two hours, blocking the traffic. Uh, and then it became clear that actually it was politically possible to abolish this. Uh, the government was very uneasy about this uh, and had to be really pushed and still has to be pushed to bring in adequate legislation. So this didn't just come about because people had become more enlightened or more educated or whatever. It came about because people really made an effort, they stuck their necks out and they decided, no, we're not going to accept this story that Ireland is always conservative, always Catholic. Uh, we think that uh, every woman who needs it should have access to abortion, uh, and we're going to make that happen. Now, on a larger world scale, we've seen the same thing in relation to the Me Too movement, because, of course, what the appalling scale that's been revealed of sexual harassment in so many industries, in politics, in media and so on, in universities, I should say as well, what that scale reveals is just how much everyday harassment and abuse was going on without people saying anything. And this is not just a matter of the perpetrators, because, of course, you can't carry on behaving like this without other people knowing. It was a matter of everybody who was colluding, everybody who was turning a blind eye, everybody who spoke up was finding themselves victimised. People were finding themselves blacklisted. We've had that very clearly explained in relation to Hollywood, but that hasn't been unusual. So what the Me Too movement has done is to shine a light on that and say this does not have to be the case, this is not normality. And it says to people who are afraid about the consequences for their own career, actually you can do this and other people will support you. But it also says to the people who have been turning a blind eye, the colluders or whatever, don't do this. We, this is a long-running battle, um, as we know from other uh, areas of sexual abuse. It's not something that you win overnight. Laws are important, media attention is important, 
but what's crucial to actually changing what happens to real people on the ground is other people changing their attitude, changing their behaviour. So it's been quite dramatic to see that happen through social media to a large extent, which is something that a lot of activists wouldn't really have said could happen. They'd have said, no, look, things have to happen on ground. And very often that's true. So Me Too has been quite surprising in that case.